Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux on YouTube. And today I'm going to be doing something that I normally don't do and that is install a desktop environment. And I thought that the very first one I do on my channel for Debian 12 is to install KDE because I think that it's probably the most current, I mean other than XFCE. So um, but I have not installed KDE before on this channel, and I thought, why, why not? Today's the day. So the very first thing I want to do is explain there are different packages for KDE on in the Debian repos. Um, if I, I think it's just, I think it's already there, but I'm just going to say if it's not there, sudo apt, sorry, install task uh, cell. And yeah, it is already there. So if I type in task cell, you'll see that you can go ahead and install KDE directly from this and you don't, no must, no fuss. Don't have to have a lot of, uh, you don't have to do a lot of thinking basically, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna cancel that and clear the screen. So that task cell that we just looked at, you can replicate that by saying sudo apt install and then task KDE and uh, desktop, okay, desktop. Now I am not going to install this, okay, because I don't want like everything installed. I just want basically the bare minimum. But there are two other things that I think you should that you should uh, be aware of. Uh, there's also KDE um, full, which has just about everything. There's KDE standard, which is a little bit more scaled back. But then there is uh, KDE plasma and desktop, and that's going to be the most minimal. Uh, installation that we have in the Debian repos. So let's get started with that. Okay, now you'll see that it's got, I mean, I mean, it went pretty quick, but basically X server, so we're not, we don't have a lot of um, bloat in this particular install. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and say yes, all right? And I probably should just go ahead and uh, pause while this, uh, while this gets through the process. Okay, it's done the installation. And what I think I'm going to do is reboot. Now, I, I am not a KDE user, so I'm, I hope I don't look stupid doing this. But um, I respect it. You know, I respect the KDE uh, users, and I definitely respect the uh, the software. I think a couple of the people that I've turned uh, Linux onto have chosen KDE, and they're coming from the Mac world. Oh, okay. Well, this looks great. So we are. Uh, can we? Does it matter? I guess not. So I'm going to stick with Wayland and log in. Okay, cool. Since we did not do time shift uh, before, um, this is the time to do so. So let me go to console and I'm gonna open up a terminal and let's make this larger. Now, if you have not done this, I'm going, I am going to basically, I know that I have, so it's basically a sudo apt install time shift and it's already the newest version. So I'm thinking it's probably here somewhere. Uh, system, and there's time shift, okay? So um, I think, I wonder if it's gonna give me a, a um, login to do this. It's not gonna do a thing, apparently. All right, well, what do I do this? Sudo time shift and then GTK, okay. And there you go. So the very first thing is I'm going to use ButterFS, which is how we set up uh, our minimal install, and say next. And uh, here is our um, 
directory that we want to um, back up or do a snapshot of and say next. And we're going to do this. Um, sure, we can do this daily, but maybe on boot. How about that? And then say next. And I do want to include the home sub volume. And so next and finish. And now I had already created one uh, back when uh, we did the minimal install, but let's go ahead and create one now. And we're going to call this one. Um, we're going to call this one. Um, with KDE minimal. And there you go. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and close. And we're good with that. So time shift working. And I'm going to hit control L. Now, since we did, like I said, a minimal install of KDE, we don't have a lot of the stuff that would have come. Had we, you know, so including GIMP, and Firefox and a bunch of other things that uh, that we want to choose to install. My my personal uh, preference would be to choose and install which version. And when I say that, I have not used um, Flatpak in the past. But in order to stay as current as possible and to help as many people, let's let's enable Flatpak. And so we do that by saying sudo apt install flatpak. And yes. And let's go ahead and clear. Now we're going to add the repo. And we do that by this command sudo flatpak. And then you can read the rest remote add if not exists flathub. And then the URL. Uh, flathub.org slash repo slash uh, flathub uh, it's flathub dot flat pack okay uh, and then flat pack repo I should have put it all in one line but here there it is pseudo flat pack and you can read the rest okay and so I'm going to hit enter and there you go now now I need to open up a browser. That's probably the easiest way to do this is to open up a browser. And we're going to go to flathub.org. OK. And let's go ahead and install Firefox. Since we don't have it installed yet, um, and let's actually, I'm going to go and add a new tab real quick and say a Debian um, dot org packages uh, Firefox dot ESR dash ESR I should say um, okay and so if I go to bookworm here you'll notice that um, what we would have installed is 102.12 this is the ESR version of bookworm. I'm just curious what's Trixie look like and what's Sid look like. Yeah, it's about the same. So if we go to uh, if we go to Flathub, we are looking at 114 instead of 102. Okay, so that's a significant uh, that's a significant upgrade. So I'm going to just copy this text, okay, and then I'm going to say sudo and then paste that text in and hit enter. And so it shows what we can do as far as installation. And I'm just going to hit the yes. And it's going to take a minute. Oh, and maybe not. Um, and I'm just curious, is it show up right away? Uh, Internet? Oh, and there it is. OK, if you do have problems like with this, like showing up quickly, I think you you might just need to reboot or something. I've had a, a just one problem so far, and it, it, it resolved itself by rebooting. Uh, so there you go. Let's just go ahead and test that out to see if it's uh, if it's working. And it looks like uh, it looks like 
we can go to YouTube and there you go cool all right so I paused the video because I wanted to try to look at a couple other uh, potential things that you might want to use um, that you might want to use for flat pack and the obvious one was kind of LibreOffice. It's kind of the, no, the known one. Uh, this is the version number that is on the, uh, on the Debian repos. And apparently LibreOffice does not want you using this version any longer. I don't think there's a problem. I don't have a problem with it. But if you're talking about uh, compatibility with all the Microsoft Office uh, formats, it may, it may behoove you to um, to up, update and use the uh, flat pack repo uh, sorry yeah the flat hub repo and uh, it's 7.542 uh, against 7453 so this is obviously a, uh, a consideration to install um, as far as NeoVim I know that certain things, you know, this doesn't affect me at all. Um, and, and not to mention the fact that I don't know that I would use, I don't necessarily like having a containerized NeoVim. Uh, and I don't know enough to know, you know, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just more difficult to use for me. I don't mind just using NeoVim right out of the Debian repos. It's, uh, it's 0 0.7. So it's not like... It's not that current, and I don't, I don't really care. Uh, it's up to you. If I did need one, you can use this, but I have done this before, and I've gone to this, uh, this page on their GitHub, and I've actually run these commands to install uh, NeoVim uh, from source, and it works great. It does take a little bit of time. There's no question about that, uh, but it, uh, it works great. No problem. And in fact, it, it, there, there's a uh, command here to actually build the dev package and to install it. Um, it take, Like I said, it takes a little bit of time. Um, Kden Live, I don't use Kden Live. I barely <laughs> even, um, I use command line to edit or do anything to the uh, videos that I make. Um, and so if I was really good at YouTube, I would probably want to to use Kden Live, but I'm not good at YouTube, so there you go. Uh, 22.12 against uh, 23. I, don't, I think that's close enough. It depends. I mean, if you're a user and you say, oh, I need this, this new thing, then you want to do that. OBS kind of in the same boat. Um, I do use OBS, and this is what? 29.1. Dot two against 29.0.2. So I don't really care that much. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, having said that, and being able to use Flatpak on Debian uh, Bookworm is, a, uh, is great. I honestly hope that it works out for certain people that have... Um, that have this need to be on the latest and greatest. And um, for me, it doesn't really apply. Uh, I don't mind just using Debian uh, packages and I don't mind um, if I needed to build anything from source. It's a total preference, but I understand how great this is for uh, people that need to have a certain um, certain updates, uh, certain features and functionality that is not there in uh, prior versions. So uh, I hope this helps maybe a little bit. Uh, and I'm, I kind of like the KDE. I think it's kind of smooth. Uh, I, will I be using it? No, <laughs> but I think it's kind of smooth. So uh, talk to you soon. And thank you for uh, your viewership and see you.